Welcome everyone and welcome to this week's F1 fixed setup track guide. We are at Barcelona, a track that personally I I like parts of it and then there's some that I don't like. Most particularly the last sector. I'm not a fan of it at the best of times, but in this car it's uh, it's just horrible. You're just on tiptoes going through those last couple of chicanes. <laughs> uh, but we managed to set a decent lap time. So as always, we generate the weather as per iRacing's schedule. This time around, it's around the 1st of February, I believe it is the date and time, and it chucked out a temperature of 24 degrees. So a couple other sessions I did, it was 26, 27. So I don't think we're gonna see too high track temperatures this week, which means for the fixed series, as you can see, we're running the red wall tire. The soft tire should be more than enough for uh, the race distance that the fixed series provides. Open setup, mediums should be fine as well. I've said it in previous videos, don't think we're gonna see the hard tire this season, just because uh, we're racing in winter uh, conditions, shall we say, or temperatures, and nothing is really gonna get up that high that will warrant it. So track time or lap time I set was a 115.85. As always, that is in the race fixed setup. We don't run the quality setup because this is all about making you consistent and faster over a race distance. And that means we've got a full tank of fuel as well. So yeah, lap times will get quicker if you do quality setup uh, or if you're practicing for the open setup and using different battery modes. But we use DRS, that's about it. And of course we change our brake bias as well, which I mentioned in the lap analysis. So as always, the lap is gonna be seen in a cockpit view, then a fire chase camera angle, and we're gonna analyze that lap, see how we did it, braking markers, turning points, little things to keep an eye out for on track. So yeah, lo and behold guys, let's head into it. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button, turn those notifications on and enjoy.
So let's have a look how we did that lap, a 115.85. And first thing, as always guys, pay attention to what my brake bias is. I've got this set to 51.5. Um, if you don't know how to bring it below 54 brake bias, it's all to do with the brake bias fine adjustment, which can be made in the car. I have a short video that is linked in the description below to show you how to do that. It's just a quick two minute video. Um, so feel free to click on that to see exactly how and where to do it. Now, as always, we start with 100% battery or as full as we can to do these laps because we want obviously as much deployment as we can, even though we're not in control of it. So coming around the last corner and heading down onto the main straight. Now the first DRS zone guys to be aware of is the one that is just on the exit of the last corner. So start finish line is only a few meters, probably about 20 meters ahead of this DRS zone. Um, so it's quite a far back or quite an early start finish line, even though the grid you start further up but that's where the timing line is. So DRS activated, as you can see, the four green lights on the dash, and we are making our way down the main straight. Prime overtaking opportunity down here, guys. This is where the majority of your overtake is gonna be made, because if you nail that last corner, you're just gonna easily draft them with DRS um, down here, even without DRS. Now we're just gonna pause it here because we're coming up to the first corner. Anyone who knows Barcelona, the first couple of corners are a very quick right and left hander and then turn three is a very kind of fast swooping right hander a real joy to drive in these cars actually because of how much downforce we've got available to us so just bring it back a touch and what we're keeping an eye out for is this tarmac here this little runoff so you could be looking in effect that's in line with the blue cone on the right hand side but this tarmac because I am trying to break on this or just just before it if you want to be safe but this is our braking marker as you can see starting to apply the brake and we're all the way over to the left hand side of course not going too far over so that we're exceeding track limits and picking up a 1x what I've also found as well, guys, is that if you do go too far over on this left-hand side here, on this curb, it does kind of suck the car in, um, a bit like a train track. And it's, you'll just, when you apply the brakes, you'll overshoot the corner. You won't run out of track, but you'll definitely go wide of the corner. So be careful not to go too far over here. As you can see with the halo, unfortunately it's not transparent because we can't get that in replay mode. But you can see here, you can still see some of the red and white curbs. We're not all the way over to the left-hand side or got this in the middle of the car. So we start to turn in as we see the apex and we're shifting down into fourth gear here. But we're not shifting down to fourth gear immediately. As you get down to fourth, as you get to the apex. Now, it's very important here, guys, that you don't hit this nasty little yellow sausage curb. Um, it is placed very well <laughs> to stop us cutting this corner. Um, and you'll probably see a few people launch over this. Now, it shouldn't throw your car off too much, but it will give you floor damage throughout the race. It, depending on how quickly you're, you are going, it, can, uh, it could spin you. So best to avoid it at all possible. Try and get as close to it as you can. You could really say I could be a little bit closer, but better to be safe than sorry here. And then as you can see, just as we hit the apex, we'll get to this yellow sausage curb. My throttle inputs, I'm starting to get on the throttle. So a little bit of trail breakthrough because we have to control the front nose of this car. Um, it's a little bit, it's not as pointy as uh, I personally would like, whereas I imagine the open setups are and you'll probably see the open setups go uh, considerably quicker here this week. And then very quickly, as you can see, while maintaining pretty much full throttle, shifting up into fifth gear, slight lift to get the car pointing in to the left again, up onto the curb. Now, you could take a little bit more curb here. You can actually get two wheels on the green. I wasn't quite there. Um, you'll have a look back in far chase camera angle. You'll see that my wheels are 
on the red and white curb here. But once again, better to be safe than sorry because if you take too much, it can unsettle the car when you rejoin the track and it can also give you a 1x. So those two corners there, guys, better to be safe than sorry. Very quickly, back on full throttle and then we come up to turn three, which is really enjoyable. Up into sixth gear at this point. And then as we get to the corner, it's they're at you so quickly here. As you get to it, you can see I've just lifted off the throttle. So half throttle at this point. And that's just to allow the car to be turning in, to stop it from understeering. We've got a lot of fuel in this car, full fuel, and it doesn't like full throttle around here. It just drifts out and you run out of track. So just a little lift long enough to keep us tight to the apex and then we can back get back on full throttle. If you want the reference point of when to get back on full throttle, as the Pirelli sign on your left hand side starts to go past your left hand side or past your vision on the left hand side. And then you're just maintaining your steering angle, allowing the car to drift out to the left. Use all of the track, you can use this green runoff and then we are nicely positioned for the next corner. Now, this corner here, you will see probably a lot of people crash. Um, see it all too often in all series, Formula 3, GT3s. People just seem to not be able to take this corner in the first couple of laps of a race. Uh, so just be careful here in your first few laps to take it a little bit easy or be wary of the people in front of you. Now, all the way over to the left-hand side, you can see very similar to the first corner how we've got the middle of the halo in line with the edge of the track. We're not all the way into this middle of this yellow curb here. And then just as we get to the bridge, so not the shadow, but the bridge itself, just as we get to it, that's when we start to break. And here's the kicker here, guys. You really need to do a little bit of trail braking to get the front and nose of the car turning in so that then we can really power out of the corner so you can see here i'm applying the brake shifting down into fourth keeping it tight to the apex on entry all the while trail braking and then what i'm keeping an eye out for guys i've actually got a visual visual target here of when to then get back on full throttle so these two repsol signs here when I get those in the middle of my screen, you will see that I start to apply full throttle very quickly. I'm off the brake, full throttle. You need to trust the grip, trust the downforce. We've got enough in this car. And then allow the car, open up the steering, allow the car to move over to the left-hand side of the track. little bit of curb there that we can use and then we're pointing the car straight back over to the right hand side and we come up to what I believe is the other than the last chicane which is just uh, really annoying this is the most difficult corner on the track now once again you'll see lots of people crash here so be careful and the main reason why you'll see lots of people crash here is because it is very 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 easy to lock up your front left tire and just go straight on. So while it is an overtaking opportunity, if you're close enough and you can send it down the inside, you have to be wary that if you do that, the racing line is to move over to the right hand side here and then sweep back in. So if you're chucking it up the inside here, it's at your own risk and you have to make sure that you make it stick and don't lock up your tires. Because if you do, you're just going to t-bone them or just crash into the side of them and more often not in these cars that ends up with broken suspension so just be careful guys here you bet sometimes you're better off just lining them up putting the pressure on and waiting for the back straight where there's a drs mode so just uh yeah just just be careful here guys so this is a difficult one because there isn't really there's no board markers to indicate how far away we are from the corner. So there's no, it's very difficult to pick out a visual braking marker. The thing that I do keep an eye out for is in my peripheral vision, there's a couple of these 
dark lamp posts. I I'm gonna say they're lights, like floodlights. I don't know if they are, but as you can see on the right hand side here, that, as I'm approaching this one here, so I believe it's the third one in or the, the second one in, that's where I'm, yeah, third one is. It's just one, two, three, the third one in, so the one closest to us. As I get to that and approach it, that's when I'm starting to break, as you can see. Now I've moved over to the right hand side here. And it's important that you break in a straight line because the way that this the ground falls here is quite is is a bit weird. It's quite um, it's not quite off camber. It, well, it is off camber, but as this this tarmac here is a little bit undulated, um, so that's when you are take, overtaking on the inside. That's where you need to be careful. So we're going to break down into third gear here, turn in just before we get to the end of the red and white curve. And as you can see, there's a real off, uh, it is off camber, because we'll see a real off camber here. So if you turn in too early, you can get up on the curb and you won't be able to accelerate out of the corner. Also, you'll lock up the front left if you start turning in too early. So you have to make sure you slow the car down enough in a straight line, then turn in. Even then, I had a little lock up here. It's just so easy to do so easy to do but i was i was lucky enough that it wasn't it wasn't too much i will play it back in kind of a, a faster speed in a minute and then as i get halfway around the corner you can see i'm starting to apply the throttle and then as you pretty much got the car pointing towards the runoff that's when you can get on full throttle unwind the steering wheel work your way up the gears, use this runoff here, very, very close, a bit too close for my liking, if I'm honest, and then running down to the next corner. It's it's a difficult corner. You're gonna see people crash there because they lock up and they overshoot the corner and they collide. You're probably gonna see people spin the car here on the exit because they get on the throttle too early. So it's, um, it, it's a very, very important corner and for me, the most difficult corner um, on the track. But we'll just play that in a, in full speed, just so that you can see the lockup. So I, I, I just got away of it. It was it was a very minimal lockup, but it was it's still so easy to do. So easy. You the key there is that you have to brake earlier than you think you do. Um, you can try shifting down into second, but you're just Second gear, personally, I still found what I locked up. And secondly, as soon as you get on the throttle, the rear just wants to go on you. So we know how much torque this car has. The higher the gear, well, third gear is, is a nice gear to accelerate out of a corner or a slow corner off. Second gear is, uh, is, is very treacherous. But yeah, moving on, heading down to the next corner now. Now this here, this here, it is an overtaking opportunity but it is a brave overtaking opportunity. If you make an overtake here, it has to be on the inside. Very, very, very rarely, unless the guy pulls out, do you stick an overtake round the outside here. One, it's just not worth it. If you've got an overspeed on them, you're best off just kind of lifting off the throttle, making sure that you stay close behind them up these next couple of corners so that you can attack them down the back straight. So, just bringing that back a touch. What we keep an eye out for is the start of this red and white curb on the right hand side. So you can see here where it just begins and I'm just starting to brake as the front end of the car, just over the nose, reaches the red and white curb. And we're gonna brake all the way down into fifth gear here, trail braking, getting the nose of the car turning in we want to hit this apex you can get two wheels up on this green curb here but what i found is that when i got up on this green curb and then i applied throttle once i rejoined the track there i was getting quite a lot of real wheels um rear wheel spin so just be careful there guys i got up on the red and white curb here as we do that we're on full throttle you can see as we hit the apex back on full throttle. 
and then use the little bit of the runoff and make sure you come back onto the track as quick as you can. This sausage curb is a no-no. You don't want to touch it whatsoever. I've personally been in Formula 3 cars here where I've hit this bang on and I've gone straight up like a, an aeroplane. <laughs> so it will definitely give your car some damage. So tight as we can there and then all the way over to the left hand side to what is a wonderful corner to take flat out here. Now you can take this flat out as I did here but if depending on track conditions on the temperature of the track how grippy it is it can warrant a small lift so um, it's you don't definitely want, don't want to run out of track because there's only gravel on the outside here and it's very easy to pick up a 1x as well but we'll play it on we shift up into seventh and as we get to the end of the curb you can see there and we see the apex come into view. You can see the little yellow sausage curb on the inside. We then turn in, full throttle, keeping it as tight to that sausage curb as we can. I actually get two wheels up on this curb here because there's in this fixed setup, there's not enough front end, as I've said earlier on. Would like it to be a little bit more pointy, but that's uh, what fixed setups are. We're stuck with it. Covering as little track as possible. And then we've got our second DRS zone, the back straight. So that's why those last couple of corners are important. Unless you can necessarily make an overtake stick there, it's not worth it because you can stick close through them through those next few corners and line them up for an overtake down the back straight where there's a DRS zone. And you can see here, loads of gravel, very little room for error. So yep if you're going side by side with someone you'll probably have to lift to get through there safely and if you get all four wheels on the inside here you will end up with an off track so just a couple of things to be careful of there guys and then drs activated moving over to the right hand side it's amazing how uh, short this back straight feels in this car compared to other cars around here <laughs> just uh, an indication of how fast this car goes now we're coming up to a tight left hander and once again a corner that's very easy to lock up your tires especially if you've got drs open you've got the draft you will have to pay attention to your braking marker and probably even bring it back a touch because you'll be carrying extra speed uh, we can't brake where we normally do when we've got extra speed, when we've got that draft, when we've got that DRS. It's amazing how many people seem to forget that. Now, what I keep an eye out for here is I keep an eye out on the 100 and this um, digital sign that is never on <laughs> in iRacing here. And I'm braking on this digital sign. Hard braking in a straight line down into second gear so i'll play it back in a second in full speed you'll see how quickly i'm moving down the gears here you can't you can't take it for granted you can't like take your time in shifting down the gears here you really do have to go duh, 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 duh. and then trail breaking through the corner and here's here's the important part here's the important part remember what i said before just see it there Remember what I said before about second gear? It's not a gear that we like to accelerate out of a corner because this car has got a lot of torque. It's very susceptible to spinning the rear, wheel, rear wheels and the rear ends just going round on you. So what I do just before I get to the apex, once we've slowed the car down enough, I shift back up into third gear because the car is, we've pulled the car up enough. That's, we've done that job. Now we want that acceleration. We want to be in the right gear to accelerate out of the corner and a third gear is a nice we're in nicely in the revs here to coast it round the corner tie it to the apex and then slowly apply the throttle even though we're in third gear we don't want to be too eager here because you can see how much steering lock we've got if we get too eager on the throttle we're still going to spin the car unwind the steering wheel And then as soon as you've got the steering wheel straight, dead straight, in line with this curb, 
or up the track, you can then apply full throttle because you've got the grip. Now, you want to avoid going over this sausage curb. It really does take a lot of time out of you. When you rejoin the track, you not only get a 1X, it's also a slow down as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a corner that you really don't want to overshoot. We don't want to overshoot any corners, but there isn't, even though there's a bowel out area here, it's a corner that you don't want to overshoot because you lose so much time. And then we head up to the last sector. Now I'll just play it back and we'll play it in full speed. Listen to how quickly and see how quickly I move down the gears here from my braking. Very quick. So you can't, can't be lazy there, you can't wait around to see what's gonna happen with your gears. You need to shift down to second quickly while braking coasting into the corner, under braking, and then third gear before you get to the corner so you're allowed to power out of it. So you can see here we've just slightly moved over to the right hand side and then we're shifting into fourth. We will shift into fifth here and we wanna keep it close to this red and white curb as possible. We don't want to get on the inside of this curb. You can see there's a little drop here Yes, GT3s, GT cars, we get away with kind of skirting over this. We don't in these Formula One cars because of how low right, how low the ride height is. Fifth gear, and then as you straighten the car out, as you can see, what well, you can see there, I'm on the brake as soon as I've got through that last corner. So it's the left, then the right. As soon as we go into the right, I'm on the brake again because what we want to do here, we want to keep it tight to this corner, to this apex, all the way round. We don't want to get up on the curb because there's no traction there. I'll tell you that from experience <laughs> while practicing. But it's very easy to allow the car to drift out, get a bit of understeer and then swing it back in. But that isn't the fastest way around this corner. You'll lose a lot of time. Fourth gear and then we're just trail braking round, controlling the front end of that car, as you can see keeping those wheels as tight to that curb as possible. I'm pretty much on the white line here without going on it. And then as I'm around halfway around the corner, I'm then start to apply throttle. Well, I'm just, just covering the throttle, not applying it too much because what I'm keeping an eye out for is this yellow sausage curb. That's our indicator of getting back on the throttle fully. So as we go, past this you can see I then start to apply more throttle there is a lot of grip there as you come out that last corner in most cases in other cars where we don't have the downforce they would spin but here we do and you just open up the steering make use of this runoff on the left hand side up into fifth gear and then we come into the last couple of corners, the dreaded, the poxy chicane. Oh, I hate this thing. No wonder Formula One drivers hate it. Uh, the, the historic version where it's just a nice sweeping right hand, there is so much better. <laughs> and especially in these cars, we have to get low down in the gears and it's just so fiddly, it's, it's, just, it's just horrible. And it's so easy to lose time here. Can't tell you the amount of times I was on for a PB and then I just effed up this last section. It's just so easy to do. So let's get to it. We are all the way over the left hand side. Use as much track as we can because we want to open up this right hander. Now, there's no real braking reference here on your left hand side, on your right hand side. It's all to do with fill. What I try and do, obviously having the benefit of VR, obviously it will be the same, it's quite clear, I'm on a single monitor at the moment while I'm reviewing this back. We can see the yellow curb come into view, which, which shows the apex, because we want to be as tight to this yellow curb as possible. As it comes into view, that's really when I'm braking. Now, am I braking on the same point every single lap? Probably not. Sometimes I'm carrying more speed, sometimes I'm carrying less speed. But if you try and brake 
as soon as you see that yellow curb come into view, around about halfway between joining this joining this runoff on the left hand side to that corner is when you're braking. See, it's starting to brake, and then we shift down into fourth. Trail braking through the corner, keeping it as tight as we can. And as soon as you hit the corner on the throttle, moving it over to the middle right hand side, and then very quickly you're under this bridge and that's when you want to brake. Now I actually lost a bit of time here. I could have carried a bit more speed through this corner. Could have broke a little bit later and carried more speed. But it's better to be safe than sorry through here. And I can't tell you enough guys, if, if you're following someone, especially on those first couple of laps, the Constantina effect here is so big and so large it catches everyone out in every single series that they're in and there are just always pile ups here so be careful be cautious i cannot stress that enough it's just all about getting through this last sector easy qualifying is where you want to push the limits of course but throughout a race the only corner that really matters is the last chicane here or the, the exit of the chicane that's the only corner that matters the rest of it is just about getting through safely and just getting your angles right so as we approach this bridge we're on the break i could have broke a little bit later again here as well i could have broke on the shadow so a little bit more time to be gained personally and then we're down into third gear trail braking to control the front end of the car Keep it as tight to the sausage curb as we can without getting onto it. The car will always unsettle a bit. Applying a little bit of throttle through here and then it's a very quick left and right to then do exactly the same. And then as soon as you've got your steering relatively straight, as soon as you start opening up your steering, that's when you can get on full throttle. So. If you get through this chicane here, the exit of chicane, be patient. Don't think the job is done because all too often you will see people go, yes, I've got through. Stamp their foot on the throttle right now, but look at the steering. We're nearly 90 degrees here. That is only going to do one thing. That car is just going to spin on you. So as we open up the steering that you can see, then we're on the throttle, keeping it inside this sausage curb. This, this sausage, you don't want to run wide here, guys. This sausage curb is horrible. Throws your car up. There's no runoff here. Look, there's very little runoff. It's just gravel on the outside. So be careful. Keep it on the black stuff. And then very quickly, back on full throttle and working our way through the gears and the lap starts again drs and across the line and there we go guys a 115.85 a little bit of time available for me there to gain but you know what that is a very good time i'm happy with that and that last sector most of it is just about getting through there safely it's all about the exit it's not about the entry. It's not even about how you go through it. It's just making sure that you nail the exit and you get a good drive out of that last corner and you don't spin the car um, and you don't crash. Can't stress it enough. Be careful through there, guys. It's not really, it's not an overtaking opportunity. There's a reason why you never see, or well, you very, very rarely see F1 drivers in real life overtake there because it's just, it's not worth it especially when you've got the main straight with DRS uh, that is just after it. So take care, guys. I hope that helps here this week. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Feel free to join my Discord as well, which is in the link in the description below. And see you out on track. Bye.